morning, welcome to St. Peter's uh, Field Broughton on this Sunday of Christ the King. Um, I'm, I'm speaking up a bit because I don't have a microphone today, the battery's run out, so if you can't hear me, please just feel free to move forward uh, and you might uh, hear it a little bit better. But uh, welcome to St. Peter's for our service today. Um, two things to mention, one is that uh, as of three weeks ago, the Diocese of Carlisle are recommending that uh, we go back to using both the bread and the wine. Uh, so today we'll be serving uh, in both kinds communion. Um, if you would still prefer to receive in one kind only, then that is perfectly all right. Uh, please just come and receive from me the bread and then go and sit down again. Uh, but there'll be a chalice bearer as well if you'd like to receive the wine today. I have some bands of marriage to read. And this is between Holly Smith Knowles of this parish and Ben Andrew Mosley of this parish. And this is for the first time of asking if anyone knows any reason in law why these persons should not marry, you are to declare it now. That's great. We will continue to pray for Holly and Ben uh, over these coming weeks. They're not being married here, uh, but they are from this parish. And we should pray for them, Holly and Ben. So let's just have a moment's quiet as we recognise God's presence with us here. Father, we thank you for this place, this church, and this community of Field Broughton. We thank you for one another. And we pray especially for Holly and for Ben. Thank you for their love for one another. And we pray for them in this period of time leading up to the wedding and all the preparations that they will need to uh, take. And we pray that uh, your love would be among them and uh, that we would continue to remember them in our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together our first hymn, which is hymn number 166, uh, and we'll omit verse 4. So hymn number 166, omitting verse 4. Thank you. Thank you. 
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, may cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly loving and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commands, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned, sinned against you and against, against our neighbour, in, in thought and word and, and deed. Through negligence, through, through weakness, through, through our own, own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and to repent of all our sins for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah 23, verses 1 to 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety, and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to you. God. The second lesson is taken from the letter from St. Paul to the Colossians. Verses 11 to 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Right, please 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 Stand together to sing hymn number 170, Jesus is Lord, number 170. <laughs> Thank you. 
speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Earlier this week on Wikipedia, I was looking at some of the kings that have reigned in Scotland over the centuries. You might get uh, to live in a castle, but it was certainly a high-risk occupation, at least in the early years of Scotland's story. Between 843 and 1058 AD, the record went like this. Constantine I, killed. Donald II, killed. Malcolm I, killed. Indulf, killed. Dove, or Duff, how it was pronounced, killed. Cullen, killed. Kenneth, killed. Constantine III, killed. Kenneth III, killed. Duncan the First killed. Lulac killed. You just can't see people queuing up for the job, can you? Whatever we may think of the institution of the monarchy, the reality is, is that kings, and to a lesser extent queens, have been around for a very long time. Pope Francis commented recently that we are not living through an era of change so much as the change of an era. If that point needed to be rammed home, at least for this country, the death of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the inauguration of the reign of King Charles III 
in the same week as we gained a new Prime Minister, makes the point explicit. Most of us, I think, are still absorbing the implications of what must be the most significant change in our consciousness as a nation that we have ever experienced. In May next year, Charles III will be crowned king. It remains to be seen how the uh, religious contents of that ceremony will be expressed, given that it is the church acting in God's name which anoints and legitimises the monarch. It will be an event of huge symbolic significance, and therefore undoubtedly potentially a source of uh, conflict and friction. But the bigger question is surely about the reign which follows. Uh, we all know what we want from a king, a good king, if we're going to have one. We want fairness. We look for restraint and integrity, wise judgment, a commitment to the ways of peace, respect for the citizens and their needs. We look for someone who will be consistent and dependable, and who will safeguard those things that we value, the faith, the culture, the uniqueness of nationhood. And we know all too well the signs that reveal a bad king, if he is capricious and cruel, liable to sudden acts of favouritism, as someone with twisted ambition and pride, whose aggression leads the nation into costly military disasters, a king who is corrupt and self-serving. That sort of king is to be feared. The people who throng the streets to celebrate the coming of a loved and respected king will not offer such devotion to a king they fear and in their hearts despise. It used to be easy to work at the image of kingship and understand why the great churches and cathedrals would choose to have huge frescoes and war hangings depicting Christ the King, expressing all the aspirations and cliches of kingship, scepters and thrones and orbs uh, and crowns. And the church in those times could deal with that proud, triumphalistic imagery of power because it reflected a church that had become a power in the land, enjoyed the trappings of status and dignity. Entire cathedrals, like the astonishing cathedral in Liverpool, were built to celebrate the idea of Christ the King. Those who told the story of Israel's history were pretty ambivalent about kings and kingship. The jury was out for a long time as to whether a king, in fact, was needed at all. Some suggested there was no need. Why would we need a king when we have the Lord himself to guide us, and to protect us and lead us? But the other strand of thought said, but the king is appointed by God. How else can you explain the success and security brought to the nation of Israel by David? The splendour of the reign of Solomon with his temple and palaces? positive proof that God was in favour of all this kingship. Nothing, however, prepared the people of Israel for a king who came riding on a donkey. The king who had no army, no palace, no weapons, no money, and no throne. This king, whose kingdom was not of this world, and who reigned in love and weakness, from a cross. This king was impossible. If you were a betting man or woman, what odds would you give that the broken shell of a man, that total failure, this reject, might make any impact on the world at all? This is where it becomes so demandingly a matter of faith to believe in his kingdom. In spite of the cross or because of it, in spite of weakness or because of it, to believe in the strength of his way of love, to change us, to change the world, to believe that his death will unlock the way to life. You can almost hear 
the gearbox scream in protest as the world's values are thrown into reverse. Whatever the history books say about how the world is ordered, how things unfold, there is an alternative. There is another kingdom and another kind of king. The way of forgiving love. The way of selfless devotion to God. The way of service from a king who washed his disciples' feet. Apparently, that is how you save the world. So let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please sit all the for our friends. Dear Lord our Father, we ask that you grant your church that, they, that all should live in peace with all lawful authority, remembering that all true power comes from you alone. And we ask that you give grace to Charles, our King, and to all Christian leaders to serve you in holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority, especially Charles our King, and for all who serve under him. Grant them wisdom and right judgment, and fill their hearts with a, desire, a sincere desire for peace. May the power of this world be directed always towards the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the royal family and for all who work with them and especially ask that you guide King Charles in his new endeavours at shrinking his royal family. We also ask, Lord, that you bless our own families and they may be obedient to your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on all who suffer from the abuse of power. We ask, Lord, that you visit and relieve the victims of injustice. And we especially pray for all those caught up in Iran and other areas where there is extreme injustice. In great things and in small. 
uproar be with them, and bring repentance to those who wrong them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have ruled justly in this land and are now at rest, especially our late Queen Elizabeth. Lord, grant to them and to all the departed eternal life in the kingdom where all are equal and you reign as Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Show one another a sign of God's peace. together our offertory here with him number 356 356 Blessed be God forever. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Indeed, right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. <clears throat> Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with the oil of gladness you have anointed Christ the Lord, your only Son, 
to be our great high priest and king of all creation. As priest, he offered himself once for all upon the altar of the cross and redeemed the human race by his perfect sacrifice of peace. As king, he claims dominion over all your creatures, that he may bring before you your infinite majesty, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending hymn of praise. Kingdom, the power and the glory, 
Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink in his cup bring new life to others. We who in the spirit of Christ give life to the world. Jesus is the and the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth is with to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand together to sing our final hymn, hymn number 398. <laughs> Amen. Amen.